Hi friends! In our last section, we learned what is electricity and its two types. In this video, we are going to learn the source of static electricity and some properties of static electricity. So let's get started. The origin of the word electricity comes from the term electron. And electricity is nothing but the flow of these electrons. In this assignment, we will learn what are electrons. Everything that you see around yourself, the chair, table, sky, water, absolutely anything is made up of matter. So matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. And matter is made up of smaller units called molecules. And molecules are further made up of atoms. Atoms are further made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So here comes the term electron. Anything or everything in the universe is made up of matter. And matter is made up of molecules. Molecules are then made up of atoms, and atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And in order to see these smaller units of matter, even molecules cannot be seen with the naked eye. But you need a very high level of magnification techniques in order to see these microscopic elements. Now we will study the structure of the atom in order to understand what are electrons and also what is electricity. The atom consists of a nucleus and electrons revolving around it. Electrons are negatively charged and the nucleus consists of protons and neutrons. But protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutral, that is, neither positive nor negative. And electrons are the same in number as that of protons. So the same number of positive charge and a negative charge is there in an atom. And in this stage, the atom is set to be a neutral atom, which is neither positive nor negative. It has an equal number of negative and positive charges. Now we have to see how and when atoms get electrically charged. We know that every object is going to be made up of molecules, and molecules are made up of atoms. And when we rub two objects against each other, their atoms come in contact with each other. And this coming in contact results in the shift of electrons from the atoms of one body to the atoms of another body due to friction. And the atom which gains electrons then goes on to become negatively charged because the number of electrons increases as compared to the number of protons in those atoms. And the object which then goes on to lose their electrons becomes positively charged because the number of electrons becomes lower than the number of protons in the atoms of those objects. So, due to the rubbing of two objects, we get two types of objects. One type is negatively charged, and the other is positively charged. I repeat, when we rub two objects, the atoms of those objects come in contact with each other due to friction. The electrons shift from one object to the other and the object that gains the electrons becomes negatively charged due to a greater number of electrons present in it. And the object which loses electrons becomes positively charged because there are more protons than electrons. And this transfer of electrons results in static electricity. Now let's have a look at some examples of static electricity. Lightning. Lightning is an example of static electricity. Clothes sticking together in a dryer is also an example of static electricity. Getting a sudden shock from someone is also an example of static electricity. The working of a photocopier is also based on static electricity. Now let's learn some properties of static electricity using some experiments. There are a certain number of combinations of things that can be rubbed together to produce positive and negative charges. For example, when first rubbed on an ebonite rod, 
the other neuron gets negatively charged, and the fur gets positively charged. Or when we rub a silk cloth with a glass rod. The glass rod gets positively charged and the silk cloth gets negatively charged. Now let's learn the reasons behind this. Electrons in the ebonite rod are tightly bound. So, due to friction between the ebonite rod and fur, the electrons from the fur transfers to the ebonite rod. And, due to the excess of electrons in the ebonite rod, it gets negatively charged. And the fur gets positively charged. And in the case of the glass rod and silk cloth, the glass rod loses electrons easily, and the silk captures these electrons. So the silk gets negatively charged, and the glass rod gets positively charged. So, for our experiments, we have this ebonite rod, which is negatively charged, and we have the glass rod, which is positively charged. Now suspend this negatively charged ebonite rod with a thread. Bring the glass rod, which is positively charged, closer. What happens? The rods attract each other. Now on the other side, take two negatively charged ebonite rods. Suspend one with the thread and bring the other one closer to the negatively charged ebonite rod. Both the rods are negatively charged, so what happens? They repel each other. I repeat, in one experiment we bring the positively charged glass rod close to the negatively charged ebonite rod, and they attract each other. In the other experiment, we have two negatively charged ebonite rods, and when brought closer together, they repel each other. So what do we learn? We learn that like charges repel each other and opposite charges attract each other. Static electricity. This static electricity can be achieved using three different ways. The first one is friction that we have learned with the help of a lot of examples. The second is induction. And the third is conduction. We will learn induction and conduction later on. Bye-bye.